the term C star wasting re refers to a set of symptoms, so and they and they differ by species. The set of symptoms are as follows. Initially, there's going to be some sort of lesion or some sort of wound or damage to the individual. And then after that, it really differs by species. So this is Pycnopodia that we're seeing here. And, and they just dismember. You know, the arms separate many, many times from the rest of the body. They oftentimes walk away. And then they decay. And what's happening for the most part is there's, a, there's an infection or secondary infection that causes stress in the animal. And then what follows is what we call wasting, which is in some species exactly what you're seeing in other species. It's necrosis and, uh, and damage to the individual that takes longer but oftentimes will result in death. There's been at least three major die-offs on the West Coast since the 70s. The first was in late 70s, 77, 78, pretty much Southern California and the Gulf of California. That was probably the most severe. Um, there was a species, another keystone species in the Gulf of California, Heliaster, that went virtually extinct during that period of time, and it has not yet recovered. It's not extinct, but it has never recovered. There was another one in, in 83, 84, associated with the El Nino event, and that was primarily, again, Southern California. I mean, very clearly associated with warm water, and it took out sea stars up through about uh, Central California. And then there was another one in 97, 98, which was also associated with an El Nino event, and it had similar effects, but not as dramatic, up through about Central California. The key difference in all of these is that those were very clearly associated with warm water. And at the time, we didn't have molecular techniques, and we weren't really sure whether it was the warming water that was causing stress or something associated with the warm water, because remember, those El Nino water masses come from the south, and they could have easily carried some sort of exotic pathogen with them. What's different this time, and one of the reasons why we're so concerned about it is that it doesn't seem at all likely to be associated with warm water. And if anything, it started further north and has been spreading south. And so, you know, we don't have the classic historical chronology to, do, to rely on in terms of predicting where we are in this epidemic. You know, we don't know whether we're at the beginning or the middle or the end because we don't know what's driving it.